Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us on another edition of The Hot Seat. Now we've got a very special guest today who's going to be joining me and we're going to ask her some questions um, about everything she's been doing. Now she, um, again, is the founder of Ape. She's a social media phenomenon um, and you probably already know her. Uh, but she's also worked with a lot of global brands around the world, including Sri Lanka, the UK, the USA and Asia. Uh, Himali De Silva, thank you so much for joining us on The Hot Seat. Insurance Motor Plus, driven by you. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Always a pleasure. Uh, now, Himali, uh, diving into you, like, so you've done so much, right? And you've, you know, of course, you've been in the corporate world. You've started your own company, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, you're also um, a bit of a trailblazer when it comes to social media. What I want to know. With you trying so many different things and obviously you like to excel and you work towards it and you thrive on doing well and succeeding, um, what is it that keeps you driven that way? Um, what do you take away from you know, trying all these different things um, and being brave enough to jump, you know, because the corporate world is comfortable to come from that into doing your own thing? Well, the thing is, I think because I've lived in like seven countries, I'm used to change and even my school life, I went from ladies to CIS. So then you're literally rebuilding your life. So change is normal for me. I'm comfortable with change. Um, and I think, look, every, there's this famous saying, every day is a school day, right? We learn something new every day. You kind of put your fingers in, you try to learn what you can. And if it works for you, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. I mean, obviously there's a shift from going from corporate to being a startup founder. But I also have 16 years of corporate experience behind me. Right. So it's not like I was a fresh graduate who just jumped into the startup world. It's all that knowledge, everything I learned from all my experience is being applied to my startup. Right. So for me, it's just life is a learning. We learn something every day, right? Right, certainly. Um, and you know, it's been interesting watching you kind of experiment with a lot of platforms, eventually kind of owning them. We'll also get to that. But speaking about what you do mainly, um, one of your big companies that you are founded, so you're a solopreneur, as you like to call it, um, and Ape. Now, Ape is a very interesting model where it's kind of, um, you're touching on circularity, uh, responsible fashion, uh, pre-loved clothing. Uh, can you break it down for us? What exactly is the concept and the idea behind Ape? You know, and um, break that down for us, please. So I love to explain it like this. If you belong to a Southeast Asian family, you have at some point in your life worn or used a hand-me-down from your brother, your sister, your cousin. That is circular consumption. Basically, it's using an item multiple times by different people. And the end goal is to keep it in circulation as long as possible to reduce waste. And Ape has started with clothes, but obviously we're going to, you know, there's a part one, part two, part three. But my whole point is to tell people, don't waste. You know, sometimes the smallest thing, like I have a really cool collaboration coming out, which is to show that a candle, you can enjoy it, but once it's done, you can use it to put your paint brushes, your makeup brushes, your coins. Right. Don't throw it away. Yeah. Try to reduce your wastage as much as possible. So, I mean, thrifting, vintage, you have all these cool terms. End of the day, it's all the same thing. Right. It is circular consumption. So Ape, love the concept. Um, now let's come to the other thing. Now you've been quite the trailblazer on social media and you've been an early adopter of a lot of platforms. I mean, you were telling me about Clubhouse when I hadn't even heard of it, to be honest. And uh, you've been on TikTok <laughs> and uh, love the content. Um, and in four months, you've built up quite a following. Um, diving into that social media world, right? I mean, there's good and then there's bad. Um, what's the bad and one of the worst trends right now on social media, you think? So, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's a trend, but I think sometimes people with big platforms, well, it's two things. They can use their platform to bully someone else or cancel someone else. Yeah, I think and I know that's what you're not about. correct because <laughs> there is two sides to every story, and it is up to us to discern and dig into something and find out. I don't think just because you have X amount of followers, you have the right to put out your side of the story cancel someone else mm -hmm. i think that's a bit and the second one is look we live in a culture where we find funny things and look everybody's tired with covid we all have mental fatigue we just want things to make us laugh right but there is a fine line between 
using someone as a parody for humor and then belittling them or being cruel. Right. I've seen this happen. <laughs> now look at uh, Dino and Block. They do it well. They are not mean. They right. use cultural insights, things that we all laugh at, things that we all like openly say, yeah. and they create great content. But they are never. They don't belittle people. They don't insult someone. Right. And then I've seen creators who just think it's funny to disrespect someone. There is that fine line. Like create your funny content, but don't disrespect another human being. Right. By doing it, you're then pushing the boundary. You know, for me, that's a bad trend I see. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a no-no personally for me. I don't like that. I don't think right. you have the right. to mock someone else mm-hmm. or belittle them right yeah you can make i mean like it's like mr bean right we we find him funny but he's we can imitate him but would you insult him yeah exactly there's a difference and and you know when you have someone who's got a huge following um that's where you cross the boundary because criticism is one thing right so you're going to get criticism any time you put yourself out there publicly it's 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 a part of the deal you sign up for the criticism that you might get i disagree Yeah. I disagree Some, on that. Okay. But right. I will get yeah. to it when you finish. Um uh, but I think the problem recently what we saw, we'll get to uh, the thing about. Yeah. Uh but I feel like when you unleash a horde of followers on someone, there is a power disparity and then it becomes bullying, right? Like we saw recently. But yeah, go on. Uh with the criticism, what are your so thoughts? So what I was that? saying is you know, it's something I really want people to understand is just because someone has a social media profile that's open does not mean that there that equals consent to you bullying me or you harassing me that is my choice to be there yeah. but i have a choice on what i will tolerate right yeah. just and you know i mean i know a lot of people say well you chose this you chose it so what do you expect no that's a fault in our mentality why am i accepting it that does not mean that men get to slide into my dms that people get to insult me no it no. means this is yeah. my personal choice to be on social media I mean, like you're a known figure. Does that mean that if you go out for a drink with your wife, that people have the right to come and take pictures of you without your consent? Yeah. No. I think yeah. And I think that's the fundamental thing that we keep. We don't question this. We right. don't say actually no. They have not given consent. Just because they choose to live public lives does not mean you get access to every bit of their yeah. life. I think I completely agree with you on that part, and I think the the thing I'm referring to where they provide you with criticism is if you comment on something that's maybe a, a common issue, or maybe you are someone who's in a position of uh, a power, or someone who's maybe a, a public figure that um, you know whose actions might affect the general public, and you will receive criticism, and then you can't unleash your horde of followers on this one person, and that's when the power disparity can come across the wrong way, you know. Look, I think it's also on the followers, right? End of the day, it's your use your discretion. Just because one person says it does not mean you blindly believe it, right? Take the time, research it. I mean, social media, everything is there. You can see both sides of the story. Right. Make your own judgment. Don't yeah. just cancel someone. And look, end of the day, we are all not the same. We will disagree on certain things. Either you take the time to ask the person why do you think this? Let me first try to understand your point of view, or you choose not to comment. Like yeah. I am someone who says I don't know enough about that to have an opinion. Like I think that is the most powerful thing someone can say. I'm that not going to so talk for the sake of talking it, talking yeah. about it. That is so important, and I think that's that's when it goes wrong when you kind of speak out of turn or when you talk about something you're not fully, uh, maybe qualified or informed enough to talk about. And I, I think again, um, personal, um, you know, you live your personal life, and no one has any rights. And when they follow you, you're not forcing people to follow you uh, to comment or not like how you live your life, right? Um, but how many ah uh, nangis are you deleting on a daily basis? How many? Fifteen uh, every morning from my Instagram, <laughs> and TikTok. I have never looked. And, okay. Um, but you know, it, it's also a bit like because my friend Nisha and Maurice, who also have big followings, are like, you need to check because there could be like interviews and things that come. Right. Now, I don't read anything because I'm like, no, it takes away from my peace of mind. I don't want to see it. And but then there are people who obviously are nice. But I think this is the problem in Sri Lanka. Just because I reply to you once politely does not mean that's an invitation for you to keep messaging and messaging and messaging. Respect, like 
see reciprocity. Sorry, can't yeah. speak. No, I get if you. If I'm messaging you, if I'm matching your energy, then please go ahead. But don't take me being the light as an invitation to bombard me. This is a, a trend, though, by the way, from me speaking to a lot of my friends who clearly, um, you know, do have large followings. And people, guys are kind of sliding the DMs and they're like, hey, by the way, I just need some advice on, you know. Um, and, and two messages later, they're like, oh, so by the way, are you single? Do you want to get married? Do you want to go out for a meal? <laughs> guys, take note. <laughs> they're on to you. <laughs> no, but also, Lloyd, I think, yes. you know, men need to understand if I'm interested in you or any woman, you know. You know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, you won't have to be pushing for it. Yeah, <laughs> you don't have to ask for EPFS, uh, you know, advice and <laughs> come around the bush. Um, that being said, what's your kind of take on influencers and you know in Sri Lanka? Um, is it a viable career? Is it something they can pursue? People, because we're seeing the boom now on TikTok, especially we're seeing so many Sri Lankan accounts, people in their homes at work. You know, they're so, slowly building up a following. Um, and you know, some of them are getting paid by brands to push a few things. Is it a viable career at this point? Okay, so the first thing is, I will always say this and I will stand by this. There is a difference between being an influencer and having influence. Mm. Right? <laughs> we all know that. <laughs> if your following is 90% of boys from Polonnaruwa and you are trying to, your brand is a shampoo brand, and you go and pay that influencer money from your business that's on you because you should have asked for their analytics you should have asked for their breakdown you know, their male to female ratio, the region these platforms have given us all the data if you do not ask for it, they might not give it and then you have to use your insight and your knowledge to go, is this actually a fit? Mm -hmm. and you have to also do a little bit of due diligence right? if an influencer is posting 20 stories about promoting things that they've never even used. Right. Come on, like it's not going to work, I, is it? I, I know there was a restaurant where a lady who does not eat pork, or like any meat, she's Muslim, had gone and done a review of a steakhouse. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> no, but you know, you see. And then I know there was a story of someone who was abroad, and they were saying, "Hey, can I have a free meal? Can I have this because I have fifty thousand followers?" Yeah, but your followers are in Sri Lanka. Right. So. You know, and the thing is this, influencers may not say, but if you're a business owner, if you are going to give your money to someone, please do your due diligence. End of the day, it's a two-way street, right? You can't just blame influencers and put them down because there are honest influencers. There are people who actually are genuine. I've met some and then I have a friend, Chris Rebel Kids, who's walked away from lacks of like money because she's like actually no this is my following so i can't get you what you need right and yeah. i have so much respect for her because she has that ability to do that yeah and she's honest but then it's also on the brand to ask and now you ask whether it's a sustainable career see the thing is this what are the skills you're learning are they transferable i think yes you might learn how to use the social media platform and Let's talk, let's be real, most influencers are pretty girls, okay? Your looks are gonna change. Let me give you a very simple example that we can all relate to. Otara, she's not a social media influencer, but her life, her story, gives her, has earned her the rights to her stripes, basically. Right. To say, hey, I support this cause. Uh, and people will automatically listen to her because it's also true it's what she believes in. She's earned her stripes, but she is a genuine person who has influence. Right. Yeah. Right. But she's not a. She would never call herself an influencer. She built her life and her career, and she's authentic to herself, and thus she has influence. Right. So in that manner, yes. But it's also called a key opinion leader. Like, for example, if you follow a politician and they talk about something related to politics, they are in that field. Yeah. But when you talk about a generalist, like, I, and I have, I'm not in any way insulting anyone young, but if it's someone who's 20 or 22 or 23 and hasn't really lived life or doesn't really, hasn't figured themselves out, so right. I don't think I knew who I truly was when I was about 35, 36. How can I be looking at them to influence me? Mm. Like truly influence. Yes, they might be able to show me a name of a brand or a shampoo and, or like a restaurant, but 
they can't influence whether I like it or whether I support them. Right. So, yeah. Certainly. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. So there is a difference in that aspect. So you you can do it, but please don't like think that you can build a career on it. Right. Because right. what's your credential? What's the stripe you earn being an influencer? Platforms keep changing. Algorithms keep changing. Interests keep changing. I mean, Clubhouse didn't exist a year ago, but yeah. now it's there. Right. Um, and you know, uh, speaking of which, uh, Himali, with everything you've done and the kind of uh, career path that you're taking now, who would you cite as maybe a role model or maybe an example that you're looking to emulate? Someone you look up to or something you look up to or a business or you know? So I would say two pronged answer. I look up to my mom, dad and my sister. There's so much I learned from them. Every day, you know, they're, obviously we're not the same, we have our differences, everything. But they're my family and mm -hmm. those are the people who influence you the most. Yeah. Who do I emulate? Now, I'm going to have a bit of a surprising answer to this. Okay. It's myself. I know everybody tries to become like someone or become like this person. But the truth is, I think the more authentic you become and true to yourself, that is, that is what you can build on. Because you know who you want to be, you know the values you want to embody and you keep every day moving closer and closer to it. I've seen people who have this public personality and then in private they're very different and I think being authentic is making that difference smaller and smaller. Right. Like I have no problem saying I'm quirky, I'm a nerd, <laughs> I'm all these things, you know, I'm really smart but hey, I like to dress up, I like makeup, I like nice clothes. Why can't I be bored? Yeah. Like, and the thing is, this, there is this famous talk uh, with Christo where it says make enemies but gain fans and I think that's true because you see the people who are aligned to you will naturally be drawn to you and right. the people who don't like you won't like you and it's okay you don't have to be liked like I, I put up a post recently saying whether you like me or not is not my problem because it's, most days I struggle to like myself and the truth is think about it we are all our own worst critic, our own worst enemy. So to live your life trying to live an image or please other people or trying to be like someone else. I mean, come on, in Sri Lanka, which mother hasn't said, can you be like this cousin? Can you be like that neighbor's son <laughs> right. or daughter? But why? Why can't you just become more authentic and obviously evolve and change to be a, the best version of yourself? Right. So my role model? It's me. If I think about it, uh, Himali from a year ago has changed so much. so much. And today my role model is me today. And tomorrow it will be me tomorrow. Right. <laughs> Himali, listen, this has been uh, uh, a riveting chat. I know you enjoyed this. Uh, thank you so much for making the time. And I can't wait to see you in person. Thank you for having uh, me. Always. Thank you so much. Keep up the good work. We're huge fans of Ate and everything you do. Uh, thank you for the constant Thanks. support and the encouragement. Always. Uh, <laughs> we hope you enjoyed the chat. Bye guys, Thanks. thank you for tuning in. Thank you. There you have it, Himali De Silva, founder of Ape. Again, you know her from social media. Um, Himali, where can they find you before we say goodbye? Uh, well, my Instagram handle is himsd. Right. Ape is Ape LK1010. My TikTok handle is Himali underscore De Silva. Uh, on Clubhouse, I'm himsd as well. Like and share the video. This is brought to you by Sri Lanka Insurance. Sri Lanka Insurance Motor Plus, driven by you.